morning Philippines. I am your host, Ding Dong Caraval. According to CNN Philippines, one woman or child is raped every hour. This is based on police record, as cited by the Center for Women's Resources, which showed that from January to October last year, there were 7,037 reported rape cases nationwide. I am here in the down urbanized city of San Nicolas, city of Cebu. Let's come and witness the testimony of a girl who was raped. Let's ask this guy. Excuse me, can you know where we can find Jennifer Briggs? Um, um, uh, good evening, guys. Um, over there. Over there. Thank you, thank you. So we are now heading to Jennifer Briggs' residence. So come with me. Excuse me. Do you know where we can find this girl? Ay, straight lang dura niya. Likod na kit sa puso. Good evening. Do you know where we can find Jennifer Woods? Suod lang dito sa may puting apultan, sir, niya. Na ay balay dito. Ilahan na to. Thank you. So, it's already 6 p.m. in the evening. And we are about to locate Jennifer Briggs' residence. <laughs> Jennifer Briggs? Yes, it's me. Come in, have a seat. Oh. It happened when I was 17. I was on a vacation in my junior year. I was spending time with my friends at the park. One day, I was staying at the park with my friends. We were chatting about the good old days when we didn't have any homework. It was around 4 a.m. when they had to go. We said goodbye and went on separate ways. On the way to my hotel, I passed two men staring at me since I was walking out of the park. I walked quickly by but after a block or two, I felt a hand grab by me by my arm and another cover my mouth. I was told if I scream, I die. I was carried roughly by two men around 25 to 30 years of age into an unknown house. I was told if I scream, I die. Their threats were real. At least, I thought they were since they were both wielding knives. And it happened. I was raped twice, vaginally and orally. After they left me alone, I stayed in the bed for an hour. I was confused, scared, and out of my mind. And the first thing I thought of was, what did I do to deserve this? I knew a real crime had been committed, and still, I was confused about whose fault it was. I cleaned myself up and ran crying to my hotel. I got to my room which I was sharing with my best friend and another very close friend. And went straight to bed. The next day, I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't think. I was still in shock. I told my friends I wasn't well and they left me a tea and a breakfast. The whole day, I cried. Fortunately, I decided not to take a shower. Almost midday that day, I realized it wasn't my fault, or at least I forced myself to think that way. I had to force myself to think straight for about a month after. My friends came back from the town and asked me how I was. I told them I needed to speak to my best friend, Lisa. The next thing I knew, I was in the clinic with my friends. I was beyond embarrassed, but too shocked to realize it. However, with support on my friends and my family, I recovered. Fortunately, evidences were found, suspects were caught, and I finally got the justice that I deserve. My advice to anyone who is in need of some support is be strong, think straight, and take immediate actions, and always remember that there is always someone who is there right beside you. 
This is Jessica Briggs and this is my real life story. This is Ding Dong Caravan and this is The Secret Files.